So let me show you, I'll bring it out. So it's a 17K sensor. All right, so if you haven't been paying attention for the past couple of hours, Blackmagic just had the largest event I have ever seen from not only Blackmagic, but borderline any camera company ever. And when I say big, I'm talking the amount of things announced, both software and hardware, as well as just some of just my jaw, like the floor wasn't far enough. It, my jaw is underground at this point. Anyway, let's get into it or else this is gonna be just as long as the event. Yeah, I'll pull out the iPad for some notes here. All right, so first of all, broadcast. He spent a good amount of time on broadcast stuff. Now, I don't really cover broadcast stuff because that feels like a whole different world in my book, but it seems like a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're a fan of broadcast products, then congrats and let me know in the comments your favorite one that was announced. But then he got to DaVinci Resolve 19. Again, there's so many and I'm going to have plenty of in-depth uh, videos into DaVinci Resolve 19, both added to my DaVinci Resolve course, which is now partnered with Justin Porter. So you should go check that out. And there's gonna be a ton of stuff we add into there. But also I'm gonna be at NAB starting, I'm flying in tomorrow. Uh, and so I'm gonna be on the show floor. We're gonna be talking to Blackmagic. I interview them on Sunday. And so let me know what questions you have below about any of this stuff. Uh, and I will pass on the questions and ask them directly and get you guys some answers. So make sure you're subscribed. But yeah, for DaVinci Resolve 19, we got Blackmagic Cloud for organizations in addition to renting licenses. And I love the way he subtly, essentially, uh, raises a middle finger to subscriptions and says like, I hate doing this, but you know, some people just need it. I'm not a big fan of paying for cloud licenses for creative software. You know, it locks up the archive of your work unless you keep paying, but large customers need it. And that's really cool. That continues with the black magic kind of uh, just mantra of like, we want to make the best stuff for as little money as possible. The cut page, he went pretty in depth on uh, later in the DaVinci Resolve 19 section, went way in depth into like this replay palette type thing, auto stingers, point of interest, more multi-source. That all was interesting. On the edit page, we got some enhancements to the text-based editing. So now you can transcript your video just like before, but you can much easier just have that panel open and essentially cut out uh, your edit from that text. That's nothing necessarily new. We've seen that in other programs uh, and we had a little taste of it before. Um, AI speech to text transcription. I'm very excited to test out all the new audio features. The AI-based voice isolation, Literally this morning, I filmed some clips in a very big, giant room that was so echoey, and this is going to be the perfect test for these features. On the color page, again, a bunch of new stuff. I like the film look creator, that'll be interesting, ultra noise reduction. The feature I am most excited for on the color page, I think, is the color slice, because this will instantly look at your image and then look at all the various different colors. And you know, and the place that I'm most keen to test out is literally there is a skin module. And cause that's most of the time when I'm creating a look and obviously it can mess with skin tones. And so having a very quick, easy access slider that allows me to adjust the hues, the saturation, the luminance of just the skin tones without necessarily having to make a bunch of masks, which already was pretty quick to do. And Teletrack AI tracking was like everywhere. Again, they just put all the machine learning algorithms into DaVinci Resolve 19. And so this IntelliTrack was pretty much like, let's see, it's on the Fusion page, it's on the color page, I believe it's on the edit page somewhere. And I think it's really smart to, a lot of these features, Grant was like, these could be separate apps or separate plugins, but like just keep it all in. Uh, resolve and just make it the ultimate software pack all in one software. So that's just a real quick look at DaVinci Resolve 19. You can actually download it now for beta one. I just did, I have no idea in terms of stability. Literally it's downloaded, but I have not opened it yet. So proceed with caution as it is a beta. They also did release some new hardware for DaVinci Resolve 19. So now we have something in between the advanced keyboard and the speed editor. So now we have the replay editor. I do wish that it had custom keys. Like they're still missing one of these keyboard editors to have custom keys for those of us who like don't wanna use a replay feature, but I would love to map those buttons to something else. Uh, and then what I'm most excited for is the micro color panel. So I love the color panels, obviously. 
uh, and this new one is a fantastic price point. There's not a lot of color panels that are even sub a thousand dollars and this is uh, just over 500 US. And the really cool thing is it's built with iPad DaVinci Resolve in mind. It has a little cutout in the back so you can easily place your iPad right there and just do your color grading because the iPad is a fantastic monitor. It's the thoughtfulness. It's just so good. And it's also way more portable than all their other panels. So this is something that you pretty much could get, you know, a nice little case for, throw in a backpack. And if you just bring in an iPad and this little micro panel to like a coffee shop, get some color grading done and uh, you can be good. For video assist, that is one of the areas that I thought would be updated. And there is a small update. They basically just made them cheaper, which again, what other camera company goes like, hey, we were able to make this product more cost effective, even though it's been out for a couple of years. Like every other company would be on the back end, like, hey, we can make this for cheaper, but we're still gonna charge the customer the same, but not black magic. All right, so now the fun part. Let's, let's talk about the two new cameras that were announced. First of all, we have the Blackmagic Ursus Cine 12K. Grant set up this camera perfectly. He literally said all the things that we've been begging for for years, which is we made our dream camera, put all the features that we could think of, and we did not care what the price point was going to be. I personally have said that on this channel and every video ever of like, please make a camera. We will give more money, it's fine. And so they put everything into this camera and this is a thick boy. This is not the pocket line. Uh, this is borderline, not even the Ursa Mini. I'd have to compare them side by side, but this is uh, almost an homage to probably what the original Ursa wanted to be. The original Ursa was an insane camera that did not last very long and did not sell very well. Um, it was huge. I think it had an essentially 11 inch, 10 or 11 inch iPad screen on the inside. It wasn't actually an iPad, but a very large screen on the inside. It had another screen on the outside for a AC or assistant camera. And here they've kind of added all that back in, just definitely more refined. Uh, we have a five inch, literally I'm getting all of the black magic tweets right now. It's my my wrist is just going off of their tweets because they announced so many products. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Literally, that is just all black magic tweets. It's just all black magic tweets right there. <laughs> it's still going. Oh yeah, I forgot about the cloud store. See the like the cloud store, this thing right here, I got the eight terabyte. They came out with another like 24 and 48 terabyte model that's even faster. So yeah, forgot about that too. But anyway, there's a 12K. Uh, it has a similar body style to the Ursa Mini Pro, but everything has been more refined. So all of the buttons are now backlit, which is a huge plus. We've got a new 12K large format sensor. So this is an entirely new sensor. They say they've enhanced all the colors, 16 stops of dynamic range. That's amazing. I was a little worried about rolling shutter, but watching the sample footage that we've seen so far, at least in that demo, Everything looked incredible. They did some pretty crazy car shots that didn't have any signs of bad rolling shutter that I could see. Obviously, we'll wait until we get more hands-on testing to see what uh, it actually is. They have this new screen on the right side of the camera that is, again, for first ACs, and they have some new menus built specifically for it, like this new focus menu screen thing that allows first ACs to actually add in different focus points. And let's get into uh, some of the tech specs of resolutions here. So the resolutions you can shoot at is 12K, 9K, 8K, and 4K. And you get a bunch of different flavors for aspect ratios. You can go everywhere from open gate at 12K, which is 12,288 by 8,040. So that's a three, two open gate. And I believe it will go up to 12K, 80 frames per second. And for high speed frame rates, yeah, you can do 12K open gate up to 80 frames a second, uh, 12K 17, 900 frames, 12K 2 to 4 to 1, 120, 9K 3, 2, super 35, 100, a couple different flavors of that. And then the fastest it can go is at 8K or 4K in 2, 4, 1, you can go 224 FPS. That is all insane and incredible, but it does make me wonder, I, I kind of expected on the more further breakdown list to see like 
6K or 4K, you know, 500 frames per second. Like I, I'm curious at what is the limitation there? Is that like a sensor thing? It's definitely not the media card thing, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I am curious if it can do those insane frame rates at uh, crazy resolutions, why it can't do lower resolutions and even higher frame rates. But that's a, definitely a question I think I'll be asking them. But yeah, let's talk about this uh, media card thing because it's they basically want to bypass any potential issues of frame rates dropping. And I recently got my hands back on the existing 12K model and I just use uh, Angelbird CFast 2.0 cards and those, you know, are some of the best reliable cards out there, but I couldn't shoot every codec, every resolution, every frame rate. You know, you kind of got to pick your media and make sure it's compatible with the specific settings of a camera you want. And, and every camera manufacturer out there has this problem. And so they are like, we're just going to build our own. And it basically like, I don't, I'm trying to think what it looks like, but it's like one of those spy movies where they're like inserting, almost looks like you're inserting a giant hard drive into a big server bay or something. Um, but that's essentially what's happening here. And you have eight and 16 terabyte media modules and they're made up of like 16, eight terabyte, it doesn't break it down here, but I forget what he said, but it's essentially a RAID array of multiple M.2 uh, SSDs and so it's ridiculously fast so you'll be able to shoot at any of these frame rates and resolutions. Also a small thing about the external, I mean the second window on the AC side has a little sun hood pop-up that just looks sleek and nice. They built a lot of first-party accessories for this, handles and shoulder mounts, the new viewfinder which connects via USB-C, it's got multiple mounts, including locking EF, which I personally really like because obviously I'm biased. I have all EF uh, glass. And then all their new features that we've been slowly seeing released to like the 6K full frame is the ability to plug in your phone and use that to upload over Wi-Fi and 5G so you can go camera to cloud from anywhere that your phone has service. Again, I can't wait to share more of my opinions on this camera once I see it. Uh, two days from now, but so far this is looking incredible. Uh, this camera is going to be available soon, I think this month, and he essentially apologized that like it's going to have to cost quite a bit more than our other cameras. So it starts at $14,995, so $15,000. Like anyone who knows cameras of this caliber, like that's an incredible price point. Oh, yeah. And he also teased the other version of this camera that's going to come out by the end of the year, and he pulls out this new sensor that's huge and wide, 17K. They're gonna come out with a 17K version. And I can feel the comments already. You're gonna say, why that's so silly and that's so stupid. I don't care. The more serious why uh, he actually states is that he wants to be able to get to a point where digital is the same quality as shooting IMAX, but without needing to go through that crazy complex IMAX workflow. But now, my people, the moment that we have been waiting years for, the box camera, it's alive, it's here, it's right there, and it is called the Blackmagic Pixis. Pixies? At least we have a short name. I just gotta, I gotta hear him say it again. I'm getting it wrong in this video, but once I learn it again, it will be ingrained, and it, I'm just gonna be thankful that it's not this like thing that takes up the entire YouTube title to type out. So we have our box camera and I'm gonna throw the price right out there. 2995, just a, right at three grand, incredible. They built a box camera that is made out of magnesium alloy. So it's got the same uh, body materials as the Ursa Pro line. So it's gonna be a lot stronger, no more plastic body. Um, it's a longer box shape. It's, it's not a perfect box. It looks more like a FX6 size. Um, which I am all for. As you can see, it handles the new viewfinder, which again, the bigger camera supports, so that's cool. You can see this as an AB camera sort of situation. Shout out to Irix for being the kind of official lens advertised on this. And they, they really did a great job with this as well. I do have one complaint. I have one major complaint, which I'll get to in a minute. I'm guessing you know what it is. But here we have a large screen on the side here as kind of our main monitor. We have a bunch of buttons for controls. 
Uh, they really made this customizable on the opposite side. They really left this to be customizable to your own liking. And I love that because you either have something that's gonna have like an airy rosette for rotating like handles. So I love that. Definitely gonna get like a right handle grip. You got some quarter 20s and 3 8 mounting points. But they also have this interesting little mount that has straps. And this is for connecting like a SSD. So if you're a fan of shooting to SSDs, you don't need to buy a cage and all these third party accessories. You can just nicely get a short USB-C cable, hook up your Samsung T9 drive that's showcased right here, strap it in, or you can use that strap for, where was it? Your phone. Again, just like they announced with all the pocket cameras a couple of weeks ago, you can plug in your phone to the USB-C port and uh, upload all of your clips to Blackmagic Cloud. And now you have a nice convenient place to connect in your phone. It also gives us a pretty good size for the camera itself because that looks like a uh, you know iPhone Pro Max. And so the body doesn't look, it's obviously taller, it's probably like this, but it doesn't look much longer at all. And so that's really cool. We also, have a little bit bigger batteries. Okay, so it's a BPU battery type, 11 to 19 and a half volts. All right, so it's not listing a specific amount of time. I don't think I've ever used that type of battery, so I can't really guesstimate. But honestly, if it's over an hour, then people should be pretty happy. I don't know, hour and a half, that'd be great. So for storage types, we have one CF Express Type B to get those really fast frame rates. Love it and a high-speed USB-C port so people can continue using um, all of their different uh, external SSDs. So this is the 6K full frame, so obviously great. Uh, it has a couple different mounts. We have a locking EF, a L mount, and a PL, which is I love. 13 stops at dynamic range, little sad there. Was hoping for 15, 14 at the worst. Keeping it at the same 50, it's the same 6K full frame sensor, obviously. So still 13, 400, 3200 uh, native ISOs. So 100 FPS in Super 16, 69, and 120 FPS in 1080. So it's not gonna be the camera for you if you want high speed and higher frame rates. Here is my biggest gripe with this camera. So I have to think on this a bit more, I think. Uh, and I have to kind of sit with it and definitely get my hands on it to see my final opinion. But obviously I have a slight disappointment for the lack of versatility in the screen. It is a fixed display on the side. And so this isn't gonna be a camera that I can, you know, be holding in front of me. And you know, I'm not gonna go like this to like view my display, right? And so where the Komodo has a very tiny screen, it is on top and so technically you can be holding it like a normal camera and just watch that screen. Now the majority of people who have the Komodo, uh, Kinefinity, all those types of box cameras, you're using an external monitor and here they've kept the top completely open, filled with plenty of mounting ports. So this is going to adopt that same style. And so I'm not gonna make a huge deal out of it because it's just accepting it's kind of re-changing my workflow. I've, I, we've all kind of been going down the pocket camera path for so many years now, we've gotten used to a integrated display like a mirrorless camera. And so this is doing what we asked. So we asked for this is breaking the mold out of the mirrorless camera world, stepping back into the small box cinema camera world. And in that world, you gotta get a other monitor on top of there. So. I guess if I end up picking up one of these later this summer when it becomes uh, readily available to purchase, then uh, you kind of will just have to get a extra monitor. But again, I'm so excited to get my hands on these. This, this was so much, this video is so long, but this is huge. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments down below. What was your favorite part of the announcement? And don't forget to let me know what questions you have for both Blackmagic directly, as well as what you want me to check out in the booth and get answered for you all at NAB this coming weekend. This is amazing. My voice is already tired and NAB hasn't even begun. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.